Hi, everyone. This is Liz Bothwell with ACI World, and I have the pleasure of being with Vimal Rai. He's founder and managing director of Trace Consulting. Hi, welcome. Hi, Liz. Thanks for having me. Nice to be here. I'm so happy to have you here, and I would love for you to give a little bit of background on yourself and your impressive career in travel and the airline industry and customer experience. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's been a it's been quite a flight, I think, to to use uh, to keep with airline terminology. I've been in the business about 21 years. Um, I started out with Singapore Airlines. I moved over to Jet Airways in India after 12 years. Um, and then I moved over to the other side of the table to work with suppliers into airlines. And uh, along the way, I worked in retail, I worked in duty free, I worked with digital solutions. So I've done a little bit of everything. And, and, I, and I, you know, people who have heard me before online know that I like to say this. I, I've done almost everything except fix and fly the plane. Um, but yeah, that, that you know, I've, I've lived in... Um, nine different cities and six different countries in the last 21 years and now finally i find myself back in singapore which is which is home for now um even though i was born and brought up here but you know covid has covid has impacted us in all in in so many ways and and i think not the least of which is that we kind of come back to to where we started off from just to find that little bit of safety um, so yeah, so the last one year found me back in Singapore and um, I'm still within the travel and aviation space. I still talk to a lot of airlines and airports um, and and really a lot of leaders within this space as well. Oh, that's great. I'd love to hear that you've done everything except fly and fix the planes. <laughs> I've loaded bags, I've loaded <laughs> cargo, um, I've put a, I, I put a pallet on the aircraft, I've done weight and balance of the aircraft. So, you know, I've, I've done a bunch of things that that thankfully were in my earlier years, um, and I probably couldn't do any of it right now. But it gives me an appreciation for what you know people go through across the you know across the entire supply chain of travel. It's it's a it's a pretty disintermediated. It's a pretty diverse supply chain, uh, and and you know when you when you've done something, you have that appreciation, and that really really helps. Oh, I bet it does. It gives you that perspective. And you mentioned COVID and the craziness of the last, say, 18 months. How do you think, from your own experience, uh, the airports have weathered this storm? Well, they've been in a very tough position because if nobody's flying, nobody's going to use your airport, right? I mean, all the aircraft have been grounded. Passengers are not going to come to the airport. Um, I have actually flown... So last year, in 2020, I actually flew six times between... Actually, eight times between February and August. I, I think I think airports have it tough. Uh, but you know, I if if there's one thing that COVID's made them realize, it's um, well actually two things. Hopefully, um, is that they can't be asset businesses. You know, they can't they can't rely on on being on on monetizing just the building and just the services. They've they've got to move beyond that. They've got to start building dare I say it, a community and, and, and so on, right? And, and there's some airports that are beginning to do this quite well. Uh, but the second thing that they realized is they don't really know the passenger. I mean, they know, they know they've got X, you know, thousand or hundred thousand people coming through every day, but they don't know, you know, even a, a small percentage of those people. And so I think what, what airports have come to realize is that they need to connect with people and find a way to connect with passengers. And, and there's multiple ways to do that, but, you know, that's, that's something they need to figure out. Mm -hmm. For sure. And like you said, maybe that is a silver lining of this. Maybe they will get to know their passengers better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, there has to be that. There has to be greater cooperation amongst all the, and you know, not not just the, the 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 typical stakeholders on the ground who work in an airport, but literally they they do need to reach out and and cooperate a lot closer with airlines because at the end of the day, airlines have that information, you know. Definitely, definitely. And, and yeah, and and that's cooperation that a lot of people have been talking about for the last five years, but very few airports have actually done, you know. So so I think time's ripe for a change. Great. Well, we'll continue to watch that. And then I know in 2019, you were the superstar keynote speaker at <laughs> ACI's Customer Experience Global Summit. Can you tell me a little bit about that and, and what makes that event so special? Yeah, well, it was a, 
I mean, it was the last huge event that I attended, you know, prior to COVID, right? And and it was um, it was really amazing. It was an opportunity for me to bring to the fore something that I'm really, really passionate about. Um, and that is behavioral psychology. So behavioral science and behavioral psychology. And I, and I pitched this idea very, very early on. And I can tell you the initial response I got was, you know, <laughs> it's like, what? Um, nobody talks about that in, in operations. Nobody talks about that when it comes to, you know, customer experience, right? And I said, no, actually, actually a lot of people do talk about it. We just don't look at it enough within travel. And so to their credit, ACI was super open, super welcoming. You know, we, we discussed what we're going to talk about. And that's great. What can you talk a little bit about of the few things that you shared around that? Sure. With your- yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, one of the key things in the in the in in the travel industry, and and particularly when it comes to airports, when you, when you look at the airport ecosystem, it's it's a very disintermediated ecosystem. There's there's multiple stakeholders, government, non-governmental, private, and and so on and so forth. And and so when you when you when you when you begin when you operate in that sort of a service scape, um, you very quickly realize that you've got to start at the other end. And the other end means the customer. So if, if you don't understand your customer and if you don't have that direct relationship with your customer, you're forever going to be chasing your tail, right? You're, you're, you're forever going to be wondering, you know, how do I bring all these disparate people together to deliver the services that I want to deliver? But if you flip that around and if you say, okay, you know, these are my customers and, and these are the multiple journeys that everyone is undertaking. And how do I sort of, now blend that into the, the 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 service and the experience that I want to deliver to them. Now that's a very different proposition. Then then you're not encumbered necessarily by all the you know all the speed bumps and all the regulations. Then then you start thinking laterally. You start thinking openly, and really that's what I talked about. You know I I, I brought the idea of um, understanding customer behavior, um, understanding what are some of the big trends that drive customers, but you know, it's it's the whole idea that customers are no longer, or, or passengers or travelers are, are, are no longer behaving in a way that we assume that they are. Um, and and you have this other little thing that that I that I kind of opened the, the the speech with, which was a which was a video by a futurist who's a who's a who's a favorite of mine, and um, he he speaks about you know, artificial intelligence and technology, which is, you know, we all know it's a, it's a you know, these are buzzwords, right? But um, the, the key question is, you know, how do we retain our humanity amidst all the technology, amidst all the artificial intelligence? And so, you know, asking these sorts of questions kind of set the stage for what I was going to talk about, which was really, how do you bring the customer at the center of what you do? Um, so it was all about customer trends. It was behavioral psychology. It was about, you know, tra- uh, it's, it's about um, what customers expect. How do you how do you connect emotionally? Because if you talk about customer experience, you have to understand that when you experiment and and when you when you try to deliver experiences, it's all about emotions. It's all about feelings. It's all about. It's not so much you know process and tooling and regulations. It's about you know, what, what are you making people feel at the end of the day? And so this was kind of what I spoke about. And, and I think that resonated with a lot of people in that audience on that day. Oh, I'm sure it did. And even even more so now, like you said. And so now as we're all sort of coming out of, of COVID, all of us at different phases and stages, uh, this event is happening this fall, early fall. Why do you think it's important for people to attend a, an event like this, especially now? Well, um, I think the world has changed considerably. Um, you know, pre, pre-COVID, you know, everything was hunky-dory. Travel, you know, travel uh, uh, graphs looked that way. You know, uh, the, 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 the growth in travel that was happening was almost unstoppable. Hygiene and safety... These are not things that these are not things that are going to go away very quickly. You know, the, these are things that are going to take some time for for people to get over. Um, and so, you know, you you have that. 
But the other side of the equation is, you know, how do you how do you continue to deliver an experience beyond the technology that everybody has been rushing to incorporate, right? And and so that's the part that kind of connects 2019 to today. You know, that that move towards technology has actually accelerated. It's it's not as if we were not thinking about touchless or, or remote or, or, you know, passenger processing, digital processing and so on. It's just that everything's accelerated because we don't want to touch things anymore. Um, so so it's it's an even more important question um, to to think about. How do you deliver the experience that you want to deliver if you're not actually physically in front of that person, if you're not if you're not able to talk to that person one on one, and if it's if everything is you know done through a computer or done through an interface, um, so it it's I would argue it's even more important to understand emotional drivers of travelers tomorrow. You know how how do you how how are you going to understand the various segments of people who are traveling? What's driving them to travel? What are some of the things that they're thinking about? What do they want to do, not want to do? And don't forget, there is a there is a fairly large proportion of people who don't use technology, who are not comfortable with technology. You know, they don't want to use mobile phones, or they can't. You know, uh, older folk, younger folk. Um, and so, how do you how do you factor in the new normal, the new the, you know the new touchless normal, if you will, for these people? Right. It's it's not a it's not an easy thing to do. And and you do have to consciously design your airport um, experiences to, to deliver a consistent experience across every touch point. So I think that's that's really the challenge going mm-hmm. forward. That's a great point. And I like how you're saying the customer experience of tomorrow, the the travel journey of tomorrow. And that's a lot of what this event will focus on. And I know for you, like you said, put the customer first, and that's really what you've you've built your business around and, and your consulting. And the ASQ awards at um, at the Customer Experience Global Summit, those awards, I think, really just show the impact that customer experience can have because they're voted on by the passengers. So it's not some award that is, you know, randomly selected or given to people or validating something. The passengers actually voted on that. So I think there's probably a lot other people can learn from those people who have won. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, voice of the customer. I mean, ultimately, you know, there's nothing like asking your customers what their experience has been like. And and if they, you know, they they, they have nothing invested in that award, right? And and they're right. going to give you the truth, you know. Um, and, and that's why I think the ASQ awards are a, a fantastic barometer for, for the airports that have won. I mean, particularly if they win it year after year. You know, that's, that's, that's obviously, they, they're obviously doing something correct then, right? Absolutely. Well, I know you have a busy day, so I, any last minute advice you'd like to give before I let you go um, to airports, to people who coming out of the pandemic really want to change and, and show their passengers a good experience? Oh, gosh, that's tough. There's there's loads of things that I talk about all the time, but I, I would say probably the biggest thing is um something that they should not do rather than they should, because there's a lot of things that they should do, but they should not imagine that everything touchless is necessarily going to solve every problem. You know, Um, don't forget that it's not about the technology, but it's about, you know, it's about how your customer interacts with that technology and how do you fill in the gaps, uh, particularly with customers who don't use the technology that you're putting in front of them. So you you do need to sit down and consciously design the experience that you want to deliver. Um, I can't stress this enough. You know, airports need to become sort of brands unto themselves. Um, and and your airport's got to stand for something as a brand. You've, you've got to decide what is the, you know, what is your ethos as a brand, as an airport. You got to build that community within the, you know, within the space that you operate with the people who use your airport most often, usually within the city, within the country, and you've got to design your experience that you want to deliver around that, you know. 
uh, a sense of place. Every survey that's ever been done with passengers brings out this idea that the sense of place becomes important. You know, tomorrow in a post-COVID situation, when people travel, the, the, the thing that they lack is certainty. There's a lot of uncertainty tomorrow, yeah, and there's going to be a lot more uncertainty. Um, trust is going to be lacking. And so when you have an airport that chooses to deliver a sense of place, a sense of belonging, even to a foreigner, you know, you've won the game. You've, you've won that. You know, you, you're able to now deliver an experience that nobody expected and yet is something memorable that people can take away. So, so that, that's, that's kind of, and, and don't, don't rely on technology to do that. That's, it's never going to be done with technology. That's going to become ubiquitous. It's, it's going to be done through the, the, the little things that you do. I, I suppose, sorry, it was a very long answer, but that, that's kind of what I hope, you know, for, for 2022 in the future. I love that. And that's, that's a great note to end on because you're absolutely right. It's all about that. Um, and you personally, I, I looked at your uh, website and I'd loved a question that you posed early on. I, it might have been 2018, but you said, how do you feel when you go to an airport? Um, yeah. Are you excited? Are you looking forward to it? Or do you dread the queue? And so I just love the way that you approach all of this. This is fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's 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 the question at the end of the day. You know, how, how do you feel about being there? I mean, the, I, I you know, my parents have traveled and they just sometimes they don't know what to expect. Um, my kids travel and they're always excited. They just want to play and they just want to check out all the fun things. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a different people. It's multiple journeys. And, and ACI actually talked about this. It's multiple journeys within the same airport. So you've got to, you've got to, you've got to be ready to deliver on those expectations for all the different segments of passengers. And it's not, you can't always do that with technology. Technology is important, but it has to go beyond that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Liz.